Hi, I'm Russ Colgren from Wetsuit Survival, and today I'm going to talk about becoming a gray man and what that means for uh, survival. Uh, a lot of people know me as a wilderness survival instructor, but uh, I was born and raised in the city, and I live in a city now of about 300,000 people, so uh, I know a thing or two about uh, surviving in a city and getting around in an urban environment. One of those concepts is becoming the gray man. So what is the gray man? The gray man is the guy that blends into his background, whatever that may be, but especially with people. So he's maybe the guy in the room with a bunch of other people, but when asked to identify that guy, they, they can't really come up with what he looked like. Is he kind of average this, average that? Um, and that's kind of what your goal is to be the gray man, is not really stand out in a crowd. Um, so how do you do that? Well, a couple different things. Um, what I've done is I just pick kind of regular worker guy clothes. I can fit in about anywhere in this country uh, with a fairly large spectrum of the population uh, any given day. You can do the same in other countries. But I'm wearing a flannel shirt, brown t-shirt, I'm wearing Carhartts, work boots, and just a plain hat, um, you know, kind of nondescript. Uh, also notice that I'm not wearing any clear identifiers. So I'm not wearing a hat that has where I work or like an NRA or something on it. I'm not wearing a T-shirt that has like a, you know, like a swag T-shirt from a race that I, you know, like a 10K race charity run that I might have done. The reason for that is, you know, someone could, um, if you get picked up and you're not saying who you are, someone could, you know, look the results up of that race online and but through a process of elimination can figure out perhaps who you, who you are, even though you're not saying. So something to think about there. You want your, your clothing to be sanitized or sterile, not have any identifying characteristics on it. Um, I could pull this off, uh, this look wearing, uh, you know, red and blue plaid or maybe blue jeans, which is obviously very common, um, but I pick earth tones because um, I want to be able to blend into um, the vegetation that's in any city as well, you know, along a river, along a tree line, uh, city parks, perhaps even a golf course. I want to be able to go to ground, hunker down, and, uh, you know, kind of blend in. And this shirt, for example, you know, even though it's straight lines, it's plaid, it is broken up enough and it is an earth tone that um, I could, you know, kind of stay hidden a little bit. It's going to help over versus, you know, a red shirt or something like that. Um, it's also very loose. My clothing's loose, fitting, bulky. Uh, I could also do this in the summertime. I could have a short sleeve shirt and shorts and still get away with all the other thing I'm carrying. Um, that's for a reason. Um, so I can conceal things on my body. It's just, it's just that simple. Um, uh, I'm about 5'9", I weigh buck 65, so I can strap a lot of shit on my body and still end up looking just kind of daddy shaped like a regular guy. Now, right now I'm wearing soft armor, I've got a Glock 19, a spare magazine, two other guns on me, a couple knives, multi-tool, flashlight, pepper spray, trauma dressing, tourniquet, wet suit pocket survival kit, you know, cuff key, parachute cord, my boots have parachute cord laces. So i got a bunch of stuff on me that, you know, could help me affect an escape or uh, help make my movement a little bit smoother uh, through a city. Uh, so it's you know, something, something to think about, uh, you know, in your selection of clothing. So loose fitting, earth tones, sanitized or sterile, um, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, think about wearing camo or not. I have a lot of people show up at my bug out class wearing camo, and that's fine, but um, camo is not always going to work. in you know, a woodland or multi-cam or even ATAX in certain areas is going to gather you a lot of unwanted attention. So think about large metropolitan areas like New York City, Atlanta, uh, Boston, Chicago, um, you're going to probably get noticed a little bit more wearing camouflage. Now, in certain rural areas where there's a strong hunting tradition, camo is probably going to be fine. And on the flip side, showing up all slicked out, looking like a banker from the big city, and you show up in some dinky town like that, where the norm is overalls and dickies and a decal corn hat um, and boots, looking that way in the Armani suit is going to get you a lot of unwanted attention just as easily. So think about you know, where you are. So I guess that's kind of my final point is um, being the gray man is just like any other kind of survival. It's understanding your environment, where you are, figuring out the patterns, what nor is normal, what's not normal, and then fitting into that. And that is being great. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Russ Colkin from Wetsuit Survival.